Good morning and welcome to morning prayer in the parish of Aberdale and Millhouses. And today we're celebrating uh, and commemorating Carolyn Chisholm, who was a social reformer who died in 1877. And although she was born in Britain, she spent a lot of time working in Australia, but then came back to Britain uh, for the, towards the end of her life. So set up a lot of um, homes and uh, helps for uh, especially women who were in various kinds of needs. So we remember Caroline Chisholm, who died on this day in 1877. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you've delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts, and I will tell also of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand, 
and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked he shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Numbers, starting to read at chapter 9, verse 15. On the day of the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant, and from evening until morning it was over the tabernacle, having the appearance of fire. It was always so, the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the tent, then the Israelites would set out, and in the place where the cloud settled down, there the Israelites would camp. At the command of the Lord, the Israelites would set out, and at the command of the Lord they would camp. As long as the cloud rested over the tabernacle, they would remain in camp, and when the cloud continued over the tabernacle for many days, the Israelites would keep the charge of the Lord and would not set out. Sometimes the cloud would remain for a few days over the tabernacle and according to the command of the Lord, they would remain in camp. Then according to the command of the Lord, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud would remain from evening until morning. And when the cloud lifted in the morning, they would set out. Or if it continued for a day and a night when the cloud lifted, they would set out. Whether it was two days or a month or a longer time that the cloud continued over the tabernacle, resting upon it, the Israelites would remain in camp and would not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the command of the Lord, they would camp and at the command of the Lord, they would set out. They kept the charge of the Lord as the command of the Lord by Moses. So they set out from the Mount of the Lord on three days journey with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord going before them for three days journey to seek out a resting place for them. The cloud of the Lord being over them by day when they set out from the camp. Whenever the Ark set out, Moses would say, arise. O Lord, let your enemies be scattered and your foes flee before you. And whenever it came to rest, he would say, Return, O Lord, of the ten thousand thousands of Israel. Here ends the first reading. <clears throat> the Canticle, the Song of Moses and Miriam. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider <clears throat> he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia.
Our second reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter four. After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak, he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued, proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. Here ends the second reading. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? The Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Now let us pray for the church and the world and our tasks for this day. Lord, as we begin this day, we ask that we may put you at the centre, that we may trust in you to help us focus all of our activities today. And so whatever we may have in the diary for this day and this coming week, we ask your blessing, Lord, on meetings, on phone calls, on chance conversations. Lord, help us to be constantly open to your love that it may be shared in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of the many needs of our world. As we hear in the news about COVID being abundant in North Korea, we think of the many people there who will be affected by it. Lord, please help them through their health system, 
and through the vaccines and treatment which may be offered by neighbouring countries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all people affected by around, around the world by the ongoing effects or readjustments to COVID and all of its knock-on effects. We pray for our health service, that you will help all of those who feel pressured and struggling. And we pray all who continue to suffer with long COVID, that you will bring healing and wholeness and renewed strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we think of the many parts of the world that are broken and destroyed, either by our abuse of creation or by hate and abuse between nations, horrific acts carried out in evil. Would we think of the situation in Ukraine, in many parts of the world where there is hunger and poverty, in many parts of the world where there is abuse of power and greed and lack of humanity, Lord, we ask that your healing and your presence may pervade all of those places, that you will strengthen all of those who seek to serve you and bring peace and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are. In a moment of silence now, naming any known to us. Lord, we ask for your healing and wholeness to surround all for whom we've prayed and those who have no one to pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who've died and those who mourn. Lord, as funerals are planned, as families reflect on lost lives, on loved ones who they see no more, we ask that you will give them strength, that you will be beside them, especially at their lowest moments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the church. And let us pray together our parish prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our parish. For all this has been, for all that is now and for all that is to come. Bless and guide all that we do now and in the future as we seek to serve you as the body of Christ in this place and share your love for all. Amen. And in this time of change and the excitement of looking forward to new things, as we look forward to Matt Wood coming to be our curate in charge, as we look forward to the completion of renovations at St John's, and as we look forward to the gradual lifting and changes due to COVID now not affecting our church life quite as badly as it did. We ask, Lord, that in all of these new things and all of these changes, you will walk beside us. That in all that we do, we shall feel close to you. That you will strengthen all involved in the activity surrounding 
the reordering and the arrival of a new curate in charge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who live in our parish, for those in care homes, schools, businesses, for those young people who will be taking exams, <clears throat> especially those who've not, who are fearful. We ask, Lord, for your help. For those in our parish who will see no one today, we ask your blessing on them. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the new, the newly baptised. We pray for all who've recently been baptised, that we may truly welcome them into the church's family. We pray for new life, for those who are expecting a new baby, for those who are adjusting to the family life of having <clears throat> a new baby. For all who find it difficult to conceive. Lord, in all the many different paths through life, we ask for your help, your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us bring to God anything that's particularly on our mind at this time. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. Help us to trust that you know, even before we express it, what our needs are and our concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The collect for today. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ give us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Amen. <laughs>